specifically about myself. So I'm Uthman. Um, I'm taking care of um, India operations for Clear Touch Connect. So we are we are globally known as a TCN. Um, so we are into cloud-based contact center solution provider in the US. So, so we have been in the business for more than two decades and uh, we have started our India operations uh, five years back and uh, we have grown quite a well, uh, like, well, especially last one and a half years, uh, like, you know, uh, sorry to say, it's been a difficult for a, uh, for a lot of folks, uh, but, uh, but it has been uh, like, you know, one of our, uh, strength in providing a solution from cloud so so we have seen a quite a bit of a, like you know good uh, in terms of like you know uh, business acquisition in last one and a half years because uh, a lot of hardship came on our way uh, like you know for the for the clients and like we were able to help them and uh, like you know uh, so we are able to take care of a lot of their issues uh, into a lot of different industries. So we, we are well known on the uh, contact center and the, and the, like, you know, and the collections agencies and all that in the US, like more than 600 financial institutions use us. So we are one of the leaders. So what we are doing here, the Bharat Connect uh, is, uh, it is a totally uh, like, you know, uh, nonprofit organization we have created uh, just to make contact center, uh, like, you know, uh, platforms and contact center solutions, a uh, provider uh, from all different parts, like you know, KPOs, BPOs. What we see, there is a gap in India, mar- India being a market leader in providing in this space, but we don't have a proper platform where we can go and discuss about uh, issues that are like, you know, pertaining, like, you know, pertaining to a uh, customer service or like, you know, how, how this industry is like, you know, going forward, what we are going to be doing and are we in the right path to take care of, uh, like, you know, keep up with our leadership, for example, um, because we know that third world countries have uh, like, you know, started aggressively, like, you know, uh, even Vietnam, like, you know, Bangladesh for that matter also is competing very well in this space. Philippines have been already doing it for quite a while. Manila and everywhere. So what are we doing in India and how, how are we going to be like, you know, cope up with this international pressure and how we are going to be able to help. So we thought, why don't we uh, like, you know, uh, get this ball rolling and uh, get this uh, platform set up and bring in market leaders and market thought pro- like you know, leaders like, like all of you, uh, like, you know, bring in and then take you, like, you know, pick your brain and then like, you know, uh, create some content so we can put that out for our audience and see if, like, you know, how we can create interest in our audience and grow this community and uh, like, you know, uh, make something like, you know, good out of uh, like, you know, everyone. So that's a goal. So, so that's the introduction about the Bharat Connect and that's where we, we, we come in, uh, like, you know, picture. Uh, we are running this as like, you know, completely, completely a voluntary service, okay? So, um, with that, like you know, we can we can get started with our uh, topic today. So, like uh, since all of our panelists are from banking today, like you know, um, uh, like you know, we, we try to do different industries and all that. So it so happened, like you know, with uh, all the schedules and uh, like you know, uh, getting hold of all uh, top people is not that easy. So it happened to be like you know, banking. So. I, I have one question, like you know, before even going into the panel, uh, before introducing the topic, since this is like, you know, uh, all three of you in the banking, like, you know, I thought I will ask you this. I, I have been in, like, you know, living in the US for like 20 years. So, um, like, you know, I have, uh, I have great, great respect and w- want to be in India for like you know, a lot of time. So I spent almost six months out of uh, every year in India. But, so I take India very seriously uh, for a lot of different uh, reasons. So m- my curiosity is, um, I have seen one difference when I'm going back and forth. I We have uh, like you know, corporate cards, like you know, credit cards in, in the US, uh, very easily we can get, right? And uh, we can use it. And I, I don't really like, you know, do expense report at all. Like, you know, I, I have never done it. Uh, like, you know, all, all charges goes to the credit card, like a you know, credit card, and then we, you know, we deal it away. I, I find it very difficult. We are not able to do that in India. Maybe I'm missing something. This is not pertaining to the panel. It's just all, all of you here. Right? That to I'll answer talk. your question, I will, I will, I will pitch in first. Yeah. So we do a lot of uh, uh, regulatory checks. I mean to say we yeah. see your civil, civil uh, what is your civil score? We see your income. We see your uh, payment capability terms. So credit card uh, for a bank, uh, uh, it can be a risk as well where delinquency is high. 
so okay. we have we have witnessed saying that there are 25% uh, uh, either the fraud either the non payment either either late payments are happening so okay. we do not want to inculcate such kind of uh, uh, behavior uh, customer behavior okay. so that's why uh, your civil score has to be extremely good and your uh, balance sheet or your or uh, pay scale has to be good so okay. just to give an example you you can try one of the app which has come great now now mr shah who is the who is running this great he says that if your if your civil score is 780 you can join a uh, crate if not you are not allowed if you are at 600 650 you will not so crate is one of the platform which has been enabled right now by sa he says that if you have a fantastic uh, uh, crate is uh, uh, civil score i give you a lot of goodies so you okay. pay credit you do the credit card payment i give you 10% discount i give you freebies okay. so okay. that's why it is little difficult for in india because we have seen a lot of delinquencies happening in credit card a lot of frauds happening in credit card a lot of risk associated in credit card so credit that's card. Right. okay so what, right. i hope i answered your question yeah 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 yeah, so yeah seeing see what see. avinash is saying okay yeah, i'll just yeah. add one more point he's coming yeah. in i think one on a bank which is the number one place we are not able to hear you uh, yeah yeah uh, am I audible now? Yeah, now, now, yeah. Yes. yeah. So adding what Avinash is saying, okay, not only this credit uh, worthiness, right? Also, there's a very vital check happen whether you are credit monger or not, whether do you okay. really need this credit card or not? That is also a perspective. That is also a criteria before issuing the card, right? Okay. So in India, in our country, the way we calculate the credit worthiness or the you know, genuinity of the credit card holders. Even the yeah. new product has been launched recently is a BNPL, buy now, pay later, which is a kind of credit, right? We are, I mean, we are uh, underwriting you, whether you are credit worthiness or not. So for all these, the checks which we're doing, not only civil, the multi-bureau checks, POSIDEX, Hunter, DDU, whether you have any negative uh, transactions happen on your name or not in last 10 years, the level of checking we do in our country. That's why the, you no. Know, issuance of credit card is much more stringent here, but the quality of transactions, the quality of repayment and all, those are better. If you see the NPA level of HDFC Bank, right? In the recent result, the way, I mean, the HDFC Bank has shown their NPA, non-performing asset, is very less compared to the volume which HDFC is having right now. Yeah, right? yeah. So these are all the criteria which we see here, and that's why the market is little different than US. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I greatly uh, like you know uh, respect what we are doing because uh, like you know uh, that there are a lot of good things we are doing in India that that I see missing in the Western world. Like you know, especially like a you know, simple OTP, for example, like you know for a for a transaction. Like, I mean, it's nothing new. It's been there for like you know like a lot of lot many years, but still like you know. Um, out of convenience or uh, the, the way how they uh, approach the risk i think the like, you know, risk and how they mitigate try to mitigate the risk is very, very different than like you know how we are approaching yeah so i i found that very interesting because like as a company we want to do it uh, we want to like you know uh, make it easy for our sales folks on the road and uh, like you know uh, to keep up with that way but uh, it's it's been a difficult uh, thing to do <laughs> so yeah Okay, so, so sorry about that. So we will get started with our panel uh, discussion, like you know, for today. Uh, so thank you very much for all three of you uh, being here. Uh, so we greatly, greatly appreciate uh, your time and your effort, uh, like you know, towards helping the Bharat Connect uh, to be part of the panel today. And uh, so today's topic is going to be self-service is your priority. But uh, what do, what do you or customers think, right? Because the, the question why we are asking this question and why we came up with this topic is uh, we see uh, there is a like you know a lot of uh, disconnect like you know between what a company is trying to do and what is actually happening. Just now I was uh, like you know discussing with this uh, also like you know about uh, like you know different things like you know. Uh, he was just explaining me about how architect was trying to come up with a building and then he wants to say like in a customer care and a glass panel on the wall but then the problem was after when they put up the like you know the design and after the building came up the the letters were reading in a reverse way because of the like you know the way the how the glass like it was going to be mirroring and everything so 
they thought it's going to be reading customer care but then it's coming up in a, like you know the, like you know uh, reversed way so like nobody knew what it is you know so like you know so we think we try to do something and then we end up uh, like you know with something totally different one outcome probably like you know could be uh, the planning like you know we totally missed it or uh, how the custom consumers are sometimes uh, like you know reacting to some of our offering some of our products how they look at the product could be different how they consume our services could be very different how they perceive what we are trying to do could be also very different right because um, like you know so we we could be giving a very convenient feature like an atm you can uh, like you know access your atm from within the car right but then there are going to be customers who are saying this is definitely a very convenient and we would like to use it and there are definitely going to be customers who are saying what if i am like you know taking it and somebody coming and grabbing it like you know and uh, well, like you know what are they going to do to protect uh, like you know uh, to make sure like you know uh, so nobody is going coming after us and like you know bad guys to like you know st- steal our money so so there's always going to be like in you know, both sides of the coin so like we thought we will put this out to uh, like you know uh, three of you and uh, like you know go through some of the uh, discussion points we have come up with and then like you know see how we can uh, like you know address uh, this problems okay so i i will quickly introduce the panel like you know here um, we have avinash banerjee from kotak mahindra bank so uh, he, he is Hello, like you know, in uh, fitness enthusiastic and motivational speaker and uh, like you know uh, transetter life coach like you know so there is uh, like a lot of different titles like you know we have come across when we go through uh, like avinash uh, uh, profile and uh, like you know we are so glad to have him here like you know so a lot many years experience 15 years of experience in the banking and uh, like you know so he's been one of our, our pioneers uh, so and we would like to like you know welcome mr avinash here to the panel and uh, thank you thank, thank you, you very much sir. thank you yeah thank you and uh, the the next one is like sijit nair so uh, deputy vice president in indus bank so um looks like uh, sijit and uh, avinash was already working together in their earlier so so they know each other yeah. very well so yeah so uh, sijit has come up with like you know a lot of different innovative ideas in implementing the marketing and how how to approach uh, like you know the branding per, per se for the banking um, especially during this uh, transformation of total transformation for the banking sector i would say where uh, those days where you had to go like you know even retrieve like a 500 rupees like you know it has to be like you know we had to go put in a token and wait and wait for your number to come on the counter and then go and then like you know go to two more counters before you get to see the cash and then come out so it's like a one or two hour process uh, i have done it many many times uh, compare that to like you know doing it on your mobile phone today or uh, like you know doing it on the atm or like you know um, sending it over like you know as a digital currency like in you know, a lot of different ways so total total transformation so in this difficult situation like you know he has uh, experience in dealing with this and how to portray this situation how to like you know communicate this well and brand uh, like you know uh, indus bank very well and uh, like you know what are the different strategies so he so he has a lot of good stuff to share with us so let's welcome shijit nair to our panel thanks thanks a lot thank you sijit being here and uh, the last third panelist is habijit from, from access bank so he is into a different aspect of the banking uh, i would say like you know where the api and banking and the digital banking transformation so this is uh, like you know totally in the back end of the uh, like you know uh, the technology and uh, like you know so uh, which powers empowers a lot of this convenience that what we see outside uh, like you know so so they are behind the scene like you know doing all this magic happen so like you know uh, once again very well experienced in the product uh, like you know development and uh, like you know uh, dealing with the banking issues for many many years and uh, like you know done a lot of those apis uh, like you know the interactions with uh, like you know other entities for uh, all this banking operation to like you know happen very smoothly like you know let, let's say you are doing sla you are doing a, like you know phone pay or whatever you are doing so like you know a lot of things happens in the background uh, like you know that makes it possible so so these are the folks that make it happen so with that experience like you know so he will be able to help us and like you know shed light on like you know some of our topics what we are going to discuss today so let, let's welcome abhijit also to our panel today welcome sir thank you thank you 
So thank you all three of you being here. So let's jump into our discussion, right? So we have put in a few uh, pointers. So like, you know, we want to, uh, like, you know, I will, I'll give the pointer to like in each one of you and then others also can jump in and uh, like, you know, add more uh, points. So like, you know, it, it is totally a free form. So no, no, uh, no issues. Okay. So let, let me start with Avinash first. Um, yeah, a dimension, a di like you know, I, we are going, we have picked up few uh, studies uh, from the industries and uh, like, you know, so uh, for the, like, you know, coming up with the discussion points. So, so because we think those studies have some uh, credibility and uh, some value. So if we can discuss from that point, like, and maybe we'll come up, we'll come across like you know, some of the good points, I think. So, so that's why, like, you know, so I'm going to point into a few different studies here. So one of the question is going to be, a data study shows that 74% of customer support center expect the number of ticket handled to increase in the near future. Okay. With a large volume of tickets, the overall cost of providing customer service is also growing along with it. To manage this cost, organizations are looking for a self-service options. Is this a way forward? I mean, yes. Obviously, I, I totally agree with your point. This is the way forward. And as a bank, as a, as a lot of private banks, we have seen the culture which is going to come is uh, we are developing a pods. Uh, so self-chat pods are there. Where, where a lot of, it is not a regular part where we have to call the customer center and wait for a long time to get, get the things uh, clarified. Uh, in fact, you can do the live chatting, you can do the live interaction and it is 24 hours seven. So we have taken a help of artificial intelligence, uh, which, which we have developed uh, very robustly in the bank, which can answer any of your queries. Mean to say, as you are finding it very hard to get a credit card, so with, with chatbot, you can just have a few questions which is uh, related to your credit card and they will throw you different kinds of answers and which can be immediately be resolved. So what we are doing in this way, in this process, we are reducing a lot of your uh, lag time, lag time of waiting, lag time of calling uh, clients, uh, customer care, lag time of visiting to the branch, which is a cost involved for a consumer as well as for the bank. See, understand when more customers are coming to the bank, I have to deploy more staff. And if I have to deploy more staff, it will take more cost. Yes. So obviously, if I can reduce this traffic of 100% to 50% coming to branch, I'm reducing yes. my cost to 50%. Yes. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and we are we are we are we are giving a delight to a customer as well. So there is a lot of customer delight which goes which is going to happen. So yes. similarly, if you see Amazon is coming with fantastic initiative, which says that drive-in uh, shop mean to say you go to the shop you don't have anyone to assist you you don't have any billing counter you just go to the shop your your bluetooth is getting enabled you pick up anything and similarly it is getting detected from the amazon app so this is a self service coming to indian indian few of the companies like zerodha is one of the best platform i have experienced so far although i am i, am, I do favor kotak always but uh, okay. zero that is one of the one of the platform one of the app where you can trade without the intervention of any any human I mean to say they will give you n number of static uh, stats related to your shares dmat ipos what to buy what not to buy so that's okay. why self service is the way forward which reduces a lot of a uh, lot of time a lot of money and a lot of customer delight is get, getting ex, uh, enhanced. Okay. So so yeah. so that is that is from my side. Okay. Yeah. So uh, CJ or uh, Abhijit, do you want to add anything, or we'll move to the next one? Sure. I mean, uh, I think uh, I completely agree with what Avinash is saying. Uh, cost is an important uh, factorial in any business decision, and if there is something that can bring down the cost while uh, keeping the standards of customer service intact and yeah. you know, everybody is all for it. Yeah. The only point that probably strikes my mind is that, uh, see the, how do we define cost? You know, the cost cannot be defined by just the metric of how much we are spending on it. That's spend. Yeah. Cost is dependent upon the benefits that you derive from that spend. Yeah. So if you are really thirsty 
and uh, you know you you, you find that without having a gulp of water you're going to die then that water becomes very essential for you and hence the cost of that water decreases so if i come to you and say utaman give me 1000 rupees and i'll give you a bottle of water you probably uh, take it right yeah. but if you've already had enough water then even if i give you that same bottle of water for 1 rupee you might not buy it from me so the cost is a very variable term as far as economics is concerned we'll have to look at it in the light of what is the benefit it provides you Absolutely. and from that perspective uh, customer service uh, cost or the cost that it, that is incurred at a call center through an executive etc you will have to check as to what is the benefit that it gives you also Yeah. so on one side it is to give customers answers to those questions yes but on the other side you could also use uh, those facilities that are available to you to bring in more revenues so for example let me talk about cross selling and upselling as a concept the customer calls you saying i am not able to log in to my you know account or i am not able to find the nearest branch to me and you could use that as an opportunity to sell your value added services your net yeah. banking your mobile banking your vat your you know wholesale banking additional products that you have you can introduce him to your uh, newly launched mobile app you could uh, take him through uh, you know what would reduce his risk or what could uh, allow you to um, you know probably update his kyc Uh, get in his uh, alternate mobile number get in the mobile number of his family and friends ask him for a referral you know all of these are probably aspects that you could think about as to how to maximize the returns that you're getting from the cause that you're taking and yeah. hence by doing that you would probably change the definition of cause that is there in your mind yeah 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 by by doing this like you know so you're going to create a long lasting relationship like you know you're going to win over the customer which is uh, like you know uh, worth a lot more uh, th- than absolutely than yeah, absolutely and in fact there are a lot of models uh, you know popularized by probably google pay ola uber etc where uh, to hook a customer they have done a lot of cash burn right yeah. but yeah. they have completely monopolized the payments industry the you know mobility industry etc to the point that a new service provider will find it very difficult to enter the market uh, without probably you know burning up his existing cash reserves so yeah. have they incurred cost yes but again in the traditional sense of cost they have incurred it but the kind of benefits that they've got it may not be called cost anymore it might be yeah. you know better to term it as investment yeah yeah absolutely yeah 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 so thanks uh, she so yeah so let's um, move to the next um, discussion point this is um, this is for you sujit so let us look at the flip side of customer service only 5% of customers who have challenge reach out for cu- help for customer support okay the remaining 95% of the customers won't even reach out to the companies uh, like you know um, or let the companies know that they have a problem right so uh, even though their customer satisfaction is plummeting like you know so it is unfortunate that like you know, as a human being we, we don't just reach out like you know make effort to reach out to like you know make it happen like you know let the company know just for the sake of letting them know right mm-hmm. uh, so does the availability of multiple channel here like you know is going to help uh, like you know increasing this chance of uh, like you know letting the customers to reach out to the companies or how do you see this one right right so uh, i think very interesting question um, and and it kind of you know links in with what i was saying that you know look at you're looking at cost and by looking at cost from a very you know narrow minded singularistic per- perspective you're trying to limit the number of people who are coming to you but now this statistic changes it all right it doesn't it yeah. when you say that 95% of people won't even come to me yeah. and they will have a grudge within their heart and you know take it out somewhere else i would yeah. rather you know spend that money to allow them to come to me for number one yeah. uh, so now the question is do i open multiple channels or multiple doors by which they can come and talk to me yeah so i was reading uh, some amount of research uh, earlier uh, probably earlier in the month or so uh, 
and I saw a research where they said 28% of customers want more channels in which they can approach brands and companies. Um, okay. For example, social media, I mean, that's a rage, right? And you could go to Twitter, you could go to Facebook and start tweeting about your company and somebody would respond, right? But that's an, there is an interesting piece of statistic hidden in the research somewhere where it says 56% of customers also want uniformity in the standard of customer service. And okay. that is very essential because the moment you open up more doors, you're liquidating yeah. the amount of resources that you can put into, do, into, into those doors, right? Yeah. And that means that the customer who probably walks into, let's say in a case of a bank, for example, my most experienced resources, staff, customers, the best of uh, you know technology is available at my uh, you know physical branch, the brick and mortar branch that I have, right? And the uh, the the banking system is kind of oriented towards customer service at the branch. Whereas if you come on my Facebook page or on my you know uh, or on my call center there are certain services that I might not be able to provide you. So the bigger question here is, is it really serving the customer to open up more doors? Or are you opening up more doors so that the customer knocks on the first door and then you say, go to the second door. He knocks on the second door, you say, go to the third door. <laughs> and it becomes a government organization before you know it, right? I mean, the yeah. experience is completely, again, it, it comes back to the original point that we were speaking, that we wanted to do something on one direction but when we started with it we went in the completely opposite direction just because we didn't stop in between and look back and say okay this is where i want to go and am i going that route so we it is possible that you want to do something else but when you do it you end up somewhere else absolutely true yeah yeah it happens many many times <laughs> yeah. yeah okay thanks so um the next like a question is for Abhijit, right? So a uh, Gartner study uh, predicted that 85% of customer relationship will be managed without a customer ever interacting with a human, right? So this is their like, you know, a study for prediction for the future. So customer self-service and automation was expected to play a significant role in, the, in this transformation. How much of this prediction has come true according to you? We, we, we are missing our audio. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you ask me this question and based on my experience and observation in the last couple of years, I cannot tell you the percentage, but one thing I can tell you is that the number of interactions on chatbots okay also in a alternate channels right alternate channel as in not the occ or outbound call center or not the inbound uh, uh customer care numbers yeah the yeah. chatbot centers right or the i mean as avinash was saying that we are i mean all of the banks are having uh chatbot these days and all these bots are you uh, know ai enabled right we also having the email and all so the number of queries are being raised into the chatbots or the number of hits we are getting into apis right when I'm saying API gateway hits, it means some of the organization are trying to access their services into their own digital premises, which are actually the legacy services of bank. For example, five years back, number of IMPS transactions happened from a particular for a particular corporate, and the number of transaction IMPS transactions today we are having is huge. Yeah. There is a huge delta. There is a huge difference. And this part, delta is actually on the API gateway. So okay. corporates, I mean, and all these, uh, uh, you know, Gartner reports and all, I believe it's not only for the retail, when it's for the corporate, right? So corporates are also looking for a self-service journey. They don't want to believe on that, you know, sending a files for the bulk payment upload and all. And in the, at, at the T plus one date, the transaction will get realized. No, they, are, they want to have all these APIs in their own premises. They want to call these services from their own digital premises and they want to have the control over the entire technology, right? So self-service, according to Gartner report, if that, uh, that is, I mean, our prediction is 10 to 15%. For me, the observation is around 25 to 30% step increase I have seen in the last two years, right? Okay. On the number of transactions, on the number of chat queries and all. 
Okay. That was my observation. The twenty-five to thirty percent growth we have seen. Okay. I hope okay. I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are missing a little bit in between. Sorry, I come again. Yeah, yeah. my num uh, my prediction i mean my observation on the prediction what gartner has made is very correct and i believe in last 2 3 years 25 to 30 percent growth i have seen in the number of transactions on the api gateway right that means the self service transactions are getting increased both by the corporate and by the retail okay 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 thanks thanks i'm here so uh shijit or avinash you want to add anything before we move on to the next one so i think uh, um one perspective that probably is very relevant to india is uh, how much are we focusing on uh, really solving the customer doubts uh, or queries uh, once the customer is onboarding onto the platform right so getting people onto the platform is one part of the story but yeah. the other part of the story is what is the number of times that he is transacting on the platform vis-a-vis why he is transacting off the platform or what is his preferred mode of interacting with the organization or the brand concerned right okay. uh, and that is where again it comes to let's say you know the bharat versus india divide right so if you want to target india for example all you need to do is probably i have you know everything listed down in one language all the major apps that you see all the major platforms companies uh, you know that you see are exactly doing that right they're focusing on india as such but the moment you go to bharat which is your you know, your tier 2 tier 3 cities the bottom of the pyramid which is this is where the largest base of customer is uh are you really targeting them so in india one is the literacy percentage itself is not very high and when i say literacy i am not saying english literacy i'm saying you know people who know to read and write their own native languages itself is low right yeah. so uh, when you have modes of communication which are not audio visual in nature uh, right and and they're still input based they're still text based they're still uh, you know text and uh, reading based and writing yeah. based right Yeah. So, how many customers are you really able to target, yeah. and doesn't that you know reduce the scope of uh, you know reach that you have for one particular channel? Yeah. And by default, if you are naturally admitting and saying that, look, by using this technology, I'm only going to target the top ten percent of my clientele, then it's not. I mean, then the question is whether that technology is viable in itself for the long run, because that ten percent, I don't know how much more. you could milk out of them in terms of revenues yeah, yeah. so the question is again about you know the vernacular text and language and inputs and feedback options you know yeah. uh, technologies like text to speech and speech to text you know uh, all of these again come into play which is which is where the ecosystem has to slightly diverge so that you know you could really use the power of all of that and target all your customers yeah. of course with you know when you have an architecture which is as agile as like for example say apis etc uh it opens up the possibility that you don't need to do everything yourself if the ecosystem opens up you are ready to take advantage and leverage on the ecosystem opening up as such so yeah, that absolutely. itself can give you a lot of growth yeah 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 so that 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 that's that where like you know obviously the role is coming in more in handy right because uh, <laughs> putting all absolutely. the efforts together let's like just give one example uttaman here uh, just one example yeah. if you see 15 20 years back or probably 25 years back okay yeah. and probably avinash has seen those days i don't know that time i used to hear that my you dad when no, i am not uh, calling you so old <laughs> yeah so just on my he's saying note. he's more wise <laughs> <laughs> you have more knowledge yeah. okay so i'll just give an example when i was kid and i used to hear my dad when he is going to needs to go to bank okay he used to say that i need to go to that particular branch where my account has got opened okay it's a story of 20 25 years back or probably yeah. more than that okay that time these core banking things were not there 
Yeah. Then yeah. when the core banking came, then any of the branch I can go, I can have my transaction, I can have my queries resolved. Then that net banking came. Okay, then the mobile banking. Nowadays, if you see the journey which we are having, we are actually doing banking transactions sitting on different app. When you are doing this, all these Google Pay, UPI and Phone Pay type of transactions, these are nothing but a mobile banking transaction. But the difference is that you are using this transaction in a different platform. Similarly, as and when these API transactions and API calls are getting happened, when new APIs being introduced, I can I can tell you there are APIs coming up, okay, and it's already in the market that can underwrite you in a different platform. For example, you are doing a transaction in Google Pay, and Google Pay itself will tell you, hypothetically, Google Pay will itself tell you that hey, Uttaman, you have a very good credit score. You can have a credit card offer, a pre-approved credit card offer for, from a particular bank, right? Yeah. So one bank is offering you a credit card in a different third-party app. This type of transformation has happened. I'm not saying only through API. There are many, many nudges. Yes. There are many turns happen in the market, right? Yeah. So these all are the form of self-service. And as Srijit was saying in the last question, that if you are opening a channel, it's not for opening another channel right? You should have at least one channel. I mean, if, even if you have a one channel or that channel is satisfying all your queries, all of your customers' queries, then you need not to have a multiple channel, right? Having multiple channel doesn't mean that you will have more, uh, you know, more you know, resoluting answers. Answers should be there. Your queries, I mean, your customers' queries should get resolved, okay? But that should be more in a self-service mode. Yeah, if they're yeah. coming with a question, you ask him multiple questions in turn so that all of the questions he is having in his mind no? that should get resolved it's right awesome. so that's my view on this and absolutely yeah. see i would add few of the points what how the bank is going to change now see customer waiting time uh, customers are not really, uh, ready to wait uh, anymore for two days or three days to yeah, get the yeah. things delivered at their doorstep they want yeah. everything to happen in the flip of second yeah so on yeah. that regard we we do uh, we have initiated a lot of automation. In fact, as soon as you visit the branch or as soon as you take any kind of services from the bank, you get one survey on the on the customer delight. I mean to say, are you satisfied with the with the product or the services what you have taken recently with the bank? So we get rating saying that how many customers are dissatisfied, how many customers are satisfied, where was the time lag? We do a lot of analysis and go back to the client. So we okay. call it as a detractor and promoter. Srijit must be knowing these terms with Kota. Yeah. So we, we differentiate them as a detractor and promoter. Promoter means to say who creates a lot of uh, good vibes to other customers also and they give a lot of references. Detractor yeah. means to say their queries were not resolved on the time. The right. time lag was too high. They are dissatisfied. So this is our role as a leadership to go back to these customers, try to understand what happened, what was the phase, what was the journey of this dissatisfaction and how we can bring it down. So we yeah. are doing a lot of, and, and AI, is, AI is playing a huge impact in doing all these things. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think Srijit or Abhijit was saying that a uh, lot of propensity is, is, uh, uh, is given to the, on the behavior. I mean to say, if you are looking for credit card, why not credit, with credit card, some SIPs can be given. Why not with SIP, some demand can be given. So we do a lot of behavior analysis of a customer. If customer is buying a home loan, so with home loan, we can give other cross-selling um, uh, products to a client. So all this analysis work is getting done by backend so that we understand that as a, as a banker, customer should not miss out from us and he should yeah. be completely delighted with the product and with the services. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Tomesh. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the next uh, discussion point is going to you, Avinash. So like you know, mostly it's going to be continuing, right? So study uh, shows like 91% customers would use a self-service channel if it met their needs. If it met their needs, it's the, like, you know, operative sentence here, right? So how do you make your self-service option intelligent enough to address the complex uh, queries of customers? Uh, I don't know how many bifurcation of complex situations will come. Uh, normally, self-service, what I have seen is a generic term where the yeah. basic needs need to be fulfilled by the client. I mean to say you lost your credit card or you lost your debit card, which can be immediately addressed. 
but yeah. complex situation where where you have lost your property document which you have given it to bank or maybe maybe some death claims which i i personally go through a, a number of times where the nominations are not there in the death claims and all so those complex situations can be handled one to one where the uh, some human touch is required to address those com complex situation but 70% to 80% of your customer service can be handled by your self centered podcast or maybe maybe the call center okay. uh, which is which is in function in in indian market right now okay. but uh, complex situations has to be handled personally because there are a lot of emotion attached to that a lot yeah. of uh, yeah. because when you are you are see why why you are creating a complex situation how do you define as a complex situation complex situations are difficult difficult situation which cannot be resolved so obviously that cannot be resolved uh, on the flip of second it needs lot of uh, lot of time lot of uh, human intervention is required to uh, come out of that complex situation yeah, but hardly yeah. that is 20% or 15% or 10% not more than that okay okay sure yeah absolutely yeah yeah sometimes the the like you know playing with the empathy of the customer and the like you know understanding yeah, yeah. they're saying see that, banking that... banking used to run on empathy let me tell you that before 15 years it was more of human touch it was more of relationship it was more yeah. of uh, knowing each other if it yeah. was no more of knowing the family of each other but now everything is moving into digital forum where yeah. human interaction is very less you you never know who has given you personal loan you don't know who has given yeah. you home loan who has given you car loan Uh, but uh, banking was banking runs till now in 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 india with lot of empathy lot of human touch lot of human touch absolutely true yeah, yeah yeah i guess the next discussion point is going to be uh, uh, sijit <laughs> favorite point <laughs> so online chat interaction cost like you know 40 cents right um whereas uh, each voice interaction like you know it cost about dollar 40 cents so almost 1 dollar more Uh, per each interaction however the cost of a ticket answered ensures entirely by an online knowledge base or like a frequently asked question page is close to zero right so if if you can use a faq and then uh, let the customer uh, like you know clarify his question like you know that's that almost cost nothing so how do you get to reach this stage as a customer service function like you know what tools do you currently use to update uh, like you know your knowledge base or like you know this is more about learning what customers are looking for like you know so we can uh, serve them the best way we can with uh, like you know uh, while we are controlling our cost so so absolutely i mean uh, interesting question uh, from the perspective of um, uh, this is like the typical catch 20 kind of question do i save on cost do i save on customer service or is there middle way out right so uh, the moment you look at this stat which says for a uh, voice i'm spending probably 10 times or 50 times what i'm spending if i use text based options or you know uh, faqs that a customer yeah. can read right uh, it brings me to a more basic question in terms of you know how many of us do actually go and read an faq and sort out our queries right uh, you'd have to look at this slightly uh, on a larger frame and see how many of us do actually read reading itself has gone down right people have migrated from reading books to watching videos on youtube and netflix and that's the route that we are taking so so the traditional view of faqs is just plain text questions and their answers uh, what is important is to focus and understand the meaning of faqs in a new light and and understand that faqs are just answers they need not be text based as such they can be in any form whatsoever it can be a video that you're showing them it can be a tutorial it can be a walk through that happens you know for example you download a new mobile app today that's a standard function right uh, in the good old days there used to be a video which showed you how you used to how you can go through that mobile app right today that function has completely gone off and thanks to you know companies like apple which are uh, probably one of the most cliched examples but yeah. that's where it stems right where uh, initially you buy a computer you buy a mac or or something like that 
uh, you would have a huge booklet of instructions that you had to go through and you had to understand which button was what and all of that, right? Now with the help of UI and UX and you know, design and how you are creating uh, various uh, components and how you're creating various functions, you're trying to make it more and more and more intuitive to the customer. You know, so you're making it such that the customer does not need a design manual, a user manual to go through it. It comes naturally to him. So you open a Mac or you buy a Mac today, it doesn't come with an instruction manual. Uh, and that's where it started. Today, a phone does not come with an instruction manual. Uh, yeah. You have a mobile app. It has a walkthrough screen that tells you the basic and that's it. It leaves it for you to figure it out. And that's where design thinking comes into play. You have to understand how customer is going to interact with the product and the function and the services that you've provided to him and then position it accordingly so that it is there where he thinks it will be. That's, that's a very essential thing. Yeah. The second part of it is the differentiation like Avinash was pointing out between IQ and EQ, right? Uh, you could use uh, learning abilities uh, on, a, on a bot, on a chat bot or a text bot, et cetera, or a voice bot for that matter, and try and make it more and more and more intelligent. And it would be able to, as time goes by, it will be able to answer more and more customer queries. But can you make it emotionally intelligent as well? Uh, you know, can you, can you uh, introduce empathy into the bot? Can you understand... When I say, you know, the same sentence to you with sarcasm, can the bot understand it? Can I tell it uh, when the customer is angry, can the bot understand it? And when do you do the actual switch? When do you switch between bot and a human interface? So these are essential questions that I think uh, organizations are figuring out as they go. Today, uh, from an IQ perspective, I think there's a huge amount of advancement that has happened. Uh, you know, the, uh, things like APIs have tied in CRMs with uh, you know, random uh, objects like voice bots, etc. So initial part of the interaction can happen on a text bot. If that doesn't work, the text bot warms up the voice bot and transfers the same history of whatever has the conversation that has happened onto the voice bot. And if it still does not work out, a call center executive gets a ping on his you know, system he can go through what was the conversation that the customer is having with the uh, non-human interface till now. What is the customer's you know, background? What is his net worth, etc. And when he, when he receives the call, he's already warmed up to the customer. He understands a lot more about the customer, right? Uh, probably uh, industries like banks can take a leaf out of non-serious industries. For example, uh, the casino industry in the US, let's say. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You go to Caesar's Palace in uh, Los Angeles or, or you know, area yeah. such, and yeah. you check into a room. Uh, it understands your preferences. It even understands the voice, uh, the, the music that you were listening on the home audio system the last time that you checked in at any Caesar's uh, property across uh, the US. Uh, yeah. And it can even play it from the last time you stopped playing it. So if mm -hmm. you were to go casino hopping, you could actually listen to the same song at the place that you stopped it between three properties uh, on the same chain, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. And that's again where lifetime value and loyalty comes into play. So how long do you know the customer? How deep do you know the customer? Mm -hmm. And how quickly can you integrate it with your technology? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge, huge point actually, yeah. I think uh, that that will that will help them to create a, like a deep deep uh, connection, right? So which is which is essentially what, what uh, uh, any company would uh, like you know would love to have. So yeah, so in, in that way, then the cost has like you know, um, least importance there because <laughs> absolutely, you're taking. I mean, that's isn't that essentially what all brands want to do? We yeah. want to take cost out of the equation. And we want to provide an experience that the customer is looking for where he does not mind paying me what I'm asking him to pay me. Yeah. And that yeah. becomes a uh, you know, secondary aspect to him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. this is again, very similar to, you know, look at the old Indian traditions where uh, you go to a hotel to have a food, uh, to have lunch, right? And they would give you more rice than you have ever demanded. They would give you a few extra sides and they would make your experience such that 
you don't feel that despite you know you have probably paid a bit more but it does not pinch you and you want to go back and experience it again and again and again yeah right so uh, so i remember i uh, uh, you know this this uh, case study that i did with uh, mainland china and uh, uh, group of hotels and uh, they said what we will do is uh, the sides that come and the new dishes that we are introducing into the menu we give to our existing clientele uh, the uh, you know regular clientele as a side on menu absolutely free of cost and they actually insist that you actually try it out without charging you for it and that in turn creates the kind of experience that you get when you go to your mother's home to have lunch where your mother yeah. forces an extra dish on you and makes sure that you has it have it right so yeah. this is this is a classic example of how an organization is building eq into its services okay uh, okay no no amount of iq would compensate for it yeah 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 okay yeah thanks yeah 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 i know um like we are coming like almost closer to the end so like uh, let me uh, ask one last question to uh, avijit before he leaves because he has to stop at 6 so um um avijit um in a voice uh, call center you have metrics like you know first resolution uh, fcr like and call it uh, monitor whether it meets your service quality objectives how do you extend this to the self service option like you know do you already have uh, like you know you already measure them using some metrics or how efficient is it can you share some like you know some some of your idea on this one very quickly i'll try to cover it see i mean the best option is that you get the feedback at the end of the uh, chat the chat conversation okay be it a chat bot be it a whatsapp banking because whatsapp banking is another form you know the channel yeah. and Yeah. these days all of the banks are having it right also you monitor and figure out if there is a drop off in the chat conversation for example if i am asking what is the best credit card for me to a chat yeah. bot okay and if the bot is answering me uh, probably a credit card at the range of millennial or kind of that type of uh, card yeah. okay or probably a regalia infini or some select card okay and if without saying anything i just hang up on the chat conversation it should ideally consider it as a drop off the reason behind if i'm applying for i mean asking for a credit card obviously it, it is in my mind that i'll apply for that card right mm-hmm. so i know that this is the best card for me but i am not applying it for so that's a broken journey it's just an example okay yeah. similarly any conversation we can easily figure out the bots have these days bots have all those you know intelligence with the help of api they can easily figure out whether it is a drop off journey or not if it is a drop off journey send some nudge to the uh, customer right you know your customer you can send a voice call you can send some mailers you can send some text to complete yeah. the journey and when he comes back you resume the journey from the point where he has ended or where he has left so mm-hmm. for him there should be a should be a you know, redundant steps to again go to the next first stage and i'm asking the same question of which credit card i'm Apply, yeah, eligible for, yeah, right? Yeah. Or I'm eligible for. So this type of journeys which we do these days in chatbots or WhatsApp banking, which actually helps us to you know get stick to the customer. See, yeah. whenever we are talking about digital transformation or, or digital banking, one is the revenue, but revenue is the end goal. Other than revenue and all, the main thing is that the customer stickiness, the customer delight. You have to hook your customer, right? you have to create more nudges for your customers so that they can come back to you okay even if the requirement is not there you need to churn the requirement right yeah. you need to churn the possibility you need to explore the possibility whether we can create some new relationship with the customer or not so yeah. that's how we do this these days and it's a practice it's a standard practice which everyone is following these days and i hope uh, Sriji and Avinash, they are also in their organizations. They are following the same standards, same policies. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, bang on. Yeah, actually, yeah, that that's essential for like every every company, right? For like, you know, so because uh, ultimately you have to figure out how we can keep your customers happy and uh, like you know, uh, sticking to your product and services. That that's exactly how we can make a difference nowadays because. the product wise the quality of the product and uh, like you know uh, the differentiation um, like you know based on the quality and all that is there 
but they are they are diminishing uh, a lot right because uh, uh, for any electronics product for example like you know so the life expectation of the lifetime of a product itself has come down a lot right you are expecting people to uh, like refresh their mobile phone in two years or like in you know, three uh, like you know imagine the situation 15 20 years back like you know you buy something like you know you expect that to be there for life right uh, like uh, how many of us had our tv for 15 20 years and still it's working yeah. right so that's not the case anymore so so you have to come up with a different way to keep your customer delight so which is like you know more more going towards the service and uh, how satisfied they are and things like that so yeah so with that, like, you know, we have uh, come to like an end of all the uh, like a discussion points. So let's see if there are any questions from the audience and uh, uh, like, you know, so let's quickly go over any, any questions, audience, anyone? I know uh, Abjit have to go immediately. So if you have any questions for him, like, you know, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi everyone. This is Deepika here. Yeah. Yeah. It it's actually uh, quite, you know, a uh, uh, good discussion is going on. So question is from my side is, uh, isn't credit an asset for the banks? If people do not, you know, default, so how do you make the money? Okay. Can you repeat your questions one more, once more, Deepika? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we can. So I'm saying, is not credit an asset for the banks? If people do not default, so how do you make the money? No, we, with default customers, we do not generate more money. Please understand, uh, we want a system or we want uh, good clients uh, who can who can take a lot of uh, good services from us. Uh, and uh, in the due journey of banking, they can, they can enhance their uh, portfolio, they can enhance their products, they can enhance their services. Uh, as a banker, it is it is our it is it is very painful to say say that. We do not generate revenue through our default customers. Uh, that journey is very painful because we lose that customer. Understand for acquiring customers right now, we pay close to 2,500, uh, close to 2,500 to acquire a customer. That is called as cost of acquisition. And it 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 really is uh, it's really painful for everyone for any organization to lose customers on and and uh, saying that if those customers are defaulted. So no ways that we make any money from the customers who are defaulting. Yeah, all right, all right. Add, I hope, uh, yeah, you can add, Vijit. I'm saying we should also add that to maintain the customer, we need almost the same amount of cost. So when we acquired that customer two years back, assuming if we have paid or if you have incurred a cost of X amount, and after maintaining that entire customer relationship, every month we have uh, incurred a cost of Y amount. And after two years, if it comes out that he is a defaulter, it's a delinquent customer. So exactly that 12 into Y plus X, this is the total amount of loss we are making. So that's why it's not at all a value proposition if we are having a default customer, right? Yeah. That is my, my observation here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In True. certain cases, there might also be cost of defaulting. So, for example, uh, you know, you, you're a loan customer and you default. Uh, I have a cost on a collection agent to go and pick up the vehicle or the asset from you. Yeah. I have to adhere to certain policies and principles that the regulator uh, has imposed on me in terms of sending you timely communication, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, doing an auction or a bid in which there must be an X number of minimum quora. So I need to get those bidders on, on the, on the platform, right? Yeah. Uh, after the bidding, I have to, again, you know, ensure that I'm still compliant with all the re uh, regulatory guidelines. If there is any surplus cash, I have to figure out how to uh, revert that excess money back to you. Yes. Uh, and at the end of the day, you're, you're not, never going to be my customer ever again. So, so it's mm -hmm. definitely a loss-making proposition as far so, as bankers so are concerned. So Deepika, when you see the quarterly results announced by any of the bank, there is a one component which says NPA. So because of NPA, we incur as a bank a lot, uh, lot of cost, which is which rightly said by Srijit. We have to set up a collection team uh, and we have to deploy a lot of manpower to get that recovered. Whatever the cost we have given to the client, we have to just, we have to recover that. So no ways that any bank who has more defaulters 
they will make revenue because if NPA goes up for any of the bank, your balance sheet will go down. You're getting my point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Hi, this is Vijay here. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, thanks for uh, you know sharing a lot of uh, insights about banking industry. I have one question. Uh, question. Uh, just want to understand. Do uh, basically we discussed about a lot of intelligence. So I just want to understand. Do banks build the intelligence internally, or do they buy external platforms and integrate how it is like? So Abhijit will answer this because he's part of this <laughs> integration. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, probably uh, after this, I'll I may have to take a leave because I have another sure, yeah. call to get in. Yeah. So very quickly, uh, Vijay, uh, the way the disruption happened in the fintech industry, the way these AI tools are being getting invented, like last couple of years, in my opinion, banks are more inclined to use the third-party AI tools, but with their own uh, process of customization, with their own process of uh, innovation in it okay but the inter integration the entire technology okay that we it's a it's a hand to hand integration it's a handshaking uh, integration between the third party fintechs who are building this ai and also the bank and that's where api banking comes in a picture right and the way new disruptions is happening on the cloud architecture and all so all of, of the banks are, you know, sooner or later, they will be moving to cloud. And luckily the bank I'm looking for, they are already into cloud, mm -hmm. right? The way we are doing this transformation, the more cloud is coming in the picture in the bank, the more you know, third party integration will happen. And this entire chatbot or these voice bots and all, even the WhatsApp, these all will be hosted outside and it will be called via cloud, right? So technologically, okay. since we are opening up our avenues and doors, we are more into building up a uh, you know, co-brand solutions with the fintechs. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I'll take yeah. a leave here. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, yeah, thanks so much for uh, being with us today. And uh, like, you know, I'm looking forward to meet you in person, Abjit, in Mumbai sometime later. Uh, sure. Totally. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Talk. Thanks, everybody. Thank thanks for being Yeah. yeah. So, uh, audience, any any more questions? Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is Jay Shri. Hi. I have a doubt. Like, how do bank consider customer service? Like, most often there is no revenue attached to customer service in bank, isn't it? Jay Shri, I'll take that question. I think uh, this is what I was answering in my first uh, answer. So. We have this fallacy or the wrong notion that customer service does not give you revenue or is a, essentially a cost center and not a revenue center, which is predominantly a very you know uh, archaic view of thinking, I guess. Uh, the way you need to look at it is to look at the business that the customer provides you uh, throughout his life. Uh, if you give good, good customer service, he will be there with you for a longer period of time. There's a possibility of cross-selling or upselling products. Uh, Cross-sell is, for example, you have a savings account, you might tomorrow also um, subscribe to an FD, a credit card, and those come with their own revenue chains. Uh, upselling is where you have a lower variant of one particular account, and I convince you to take a slightly higher variant of that same product, right? So those are multiple channels by which I can get revenue, either in the short term or in the long term. Also, for banks, there are fee-based and fund-based uh, products. So if you are a fee-based customer, I could move you into a fund-based product like a loan. Uh, if you are a fund-based product, I could move you into a fee-based product, for example, a mutual fund or, or an insurance product as such, which can give me upfront revenues. So any customer stream that you talk about, uh, customer service cannot be looked at in isolation and said that uh, it is just a cost center. It is, it is just a gateway for you to get more revenues. Uh, with the caveat that you need to know how to intelligently use it. Yeah, Perfectly yeah. said by Srijit. I will add one more point. See, our analysis says that uh, we generate more customers uh, through our uh, delighted customers who are staying with us in the journey of banking. Yeah. So for yeah. us, customer service is extremely important to delight the customers. If we are not delighting the customer, our referencing model will completely stop. Yeah. So one yeah. customer 
gives in a span of his his banking life cycle close to five references, and which is obviously a fee uh, income for us. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Also, there is another thank you, thank you, uh, small aspect of it. Uh, let's take into view that we are living in the age of social media, and the way it changes things is that the customer has a huge and exponential power to add weight to his voice. So, if I don't give the customer the service that he's looking for, it is quite possible that he goes. on to the social media he is an influencer and he influences his friend circle not to take up my product so, and and there's no i mean there are n number of examples uh, uh, you know where a brand has done something and it has flared up on social media and uh, it has you know it has brought down the shares of the bank famously uh, when cristiano uh, cristiano ronaldo took away the coke bottles from his press conference table you know just an action like that can sh- tank shares of coca cola by 12 13% <laughs> uh, anything can happen in modern world yeah absolutely yeah it's a, it's a very strong message here yeah, very very uh, yeah because uh, customers have been empowered with the social media like never before right so absolutely right? yeah 15 years back that is not possible <laughs> but it, yeah. it is it is possible. we, we have a team them, you know we have a team which is dedicated them, let them Sorry, sorry, sorry. Continue. Yeah, no. So I, I was just saying, you know, the way we are going, I, th- I think that's that's a positive out of it, right? That yeah. today my customer can come and speak to me, and he can speak to me in front of anybody. He can say whatever he feels like, and I can interact with him in a purely open, fair, and transparent manner, uh, in almost real time. I mean, what more do we want? Only thing is, these are powers that are given in our hands. Now it's on to us how do we use it and how do we learn to use it. Right. yeah absolutely yeah yeah sorry when i was cutting you yeah. off yeah so i was trying to say we have a team dedicated uh, for social media escalations so immediately yeah. anything happens in twitter or anything happens in any of the forum we have to immediately cater to the client understand his requirement get back to them in 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 second of time and yeah. resolve it and again make them delight customers yeah. and yeah. lot of learning has to be simulated into the pod channel so that uh, the self service can be given to those clients rather than going into the social media sure, sure. absolutely yeah 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 so let uh, in fact there is this interesting example of you know the 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 collage of uh, you know technology stack and how uh, big data is working and what is happening on social media just to give you a random example right uh, think of the times when uh, you had to order a car and you had to wait for years together for the car to be actually in your showroom right and now think of it today uh, let's take the example of maruti as a as a company right they have uh, almost 13 varieties of cars you know in terms of models they have they have something like wagonar they have a ignis they have a, you know sias uh, whatever x x number of uh, models in each of those models there is a petrol variant there is a diesel variant in each of those variants there is a low end there is a mid range there is a high end car uh, in each of those variants you also have color options also you might have some additions along with it now think of the number of permutation combination of car choices that you have from one particular brand and now think that had i not known what my customer wants much in advance i would never have been able to produce the car so think of it from a perspective of an individual customer uh, uttaman goes to his nearest maruti showroom and says i want a blue color sias uh, diesel variant automatic transmission high end this car the company is so intelligent and it has done its research so well that new 3 months back when utaman didn't even consider buying a car it knew that utaman would come and order this car and it has already made this uh, or produced this car at its factory let's say in pune and it has transported this car to the nearest showroom that utaman is going to finally pick it up from and it is because of that kind of customer service with the help of you know technology stack like for example big data where you're picking up the latest colors Uh, uh from the chats that is going on the online uh, social media sphere 
you're trying to understand what is going to be the next in color six months from now, 12 months from now. And then you're trying to build, you know, you're, you're interacting with the paint producer, somebody like Nerolac or Asian paints and getting that color produced. Then you're fixing the quantities, bringing it down to your factory, doing your tests, getting the car in place, doing a launch, doing the advertising, and then finally you're getting the car out. So if you think of it at the back end, there's a whole deal of magic that is going on uh, to get your car just in time. You know, Otherwise, imagine in the good old days, it was just uh, two models of car or two variants of car, one black and one red that you used to get. And only Maruti 800 was there. And for that, you had to wait for six years. And today, uh, from there, uh, you've come to a situation where you hardly wait for any time. In fact, there are customers who move to other uh, competing car variants and uh, car brands just because one particular model was not in stock or it will take a slightly longer uh, delivery time, right? Absolutely. You all do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Yeah. A very good example. Yeah. So there are a lot of magic that goes um, right behind the scene. So, so understanding what what is being uh, like, you know, you know, look forward to from the client side. Okay. So uh, any more questions, anyone uh, from the audience? Let us know. So uh, I want to like an end with one one recent interaction that I had in India while I was I was there uh, last week uh, in Chennai. I just came back. So I was ordering some food online. Um, there's a site called Sitara. Um, so some snacks and all that for family and friends here. So like you know, I didn't even know. I just put whatever the uh, like you know they shipped, and then I brought it here. And then when we opened, there was some small uh, box there. Uh, it says like you know, uh, like you know, Tirupadi uh, Laddu uh, Prasad <laughs> for our esteemed customers from Chitara. Oh, wow. Man, man. <laughs> so, so that is a small uh, customer delight. Whatever yeah. way they can. Yeah, so, so they, they had to be like, you know, really thinking, uh, I mean, going little extra mile, like, you know, uh, doing this one. That's a, that's a very good, uh, like a way of delighting our customers. So I said, okay, that's, that's worth mentioning their name and <laughs> promoting. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, there are, there are companies are figuring out a lot of different ways uh, to do uh, things. So, um yeah, you, you never know. Sometimes it, it might, uh, like, you know, as uh, <clears throat> Shijit was saying, like, you know, it could, uh, it don't, don't make it as a cost, right? It's just, uh, uh, like, you know, way of uh, interaction and they're keeping them delight. And so, so it's going to uh, pay back in a very big way. So that, that's exactly what, uh, like, you know, the companies are looking forward to. And that, that, that's a way forward, I guess. So, yeah. So with that note, so we are uh, coming to uh, end for this panel discussion. So I would like to thank uh, Srijit and Avinash uh, for being here and uh, Akshita also for his time. And uh, so we're looking forward to uh, like, you know, uh, do many more sessions, especially both of you are in Bangalore. So I just want to uh, let you know. So we are we are going to have an event, uh, in-person event we are planning in Bangalore in sometime first week of February. Um, like you know so i would like to seriously like you know uh, invite both of you for that event uh, like you know so i'd like to meet you also in person so uh, it's going to be like an exciting uh, some uh, topic about the customer interaction and uh, like you know uh, so like and i just wanted to let you both of you know okay so uh, please consider this as a personal invite <laughs> so we would be more than happy to have you there okay so Thank you so much for your time and uh, like, you know, we would like to be in touch with you in future. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Uttaman. Thanks for uh, inviting us on and uh, thanks to everybody in the audience as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. And it was a great uh, uh, interacting with everyone. Sijit, thank you. Uh, after a long time, we interacted. Uh, Uttaman, uh, uh, thank, thank you that uh, you invited us for this panel. And uh, we are looking forward for such more uh, interaction to happen shortly. Yeah. And 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 it was a great uh, interaction with the audience as well. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.